Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. This week I've got some tips on choosing a home security system, or at least some general advice. This is a decision really you have to make yourself, but let me give you some ideas and some insights and you can kind of go from there. It's a question I get pretty often. What kind of home security system should I get? I'm just starting with my smart home or I'm expanding it. You know, I think we're all pretty familiar with the big names in home security. You call them up and make the appointment, they come out to your home, evaluate it, install it, and then lock you into a monthly contract from now until the end of time. And these companies have also gotten into the smart home game over the past five or ten years, adding some, you know, the wireless radios and Zigbee and Wi-Fi and other things to their alarm panels and letting you talk to them via your favorite, you know, digital voice assistant from Amazon and Google and whatnot. But the opposite is true too. So the more modern smart home companies that have kind of come into the being, come, come into the market over the past decade, have also gotten into the home security business as well. Specifically Nest, who used to just make thermostats and smoke detectors, they bought Dropcam, then you had the Nest cameras, then last year they introduced their own home security system. Ring, maker of video doorbells at their beginning, and then they've expanded with uh, outdoor uh, security cameras, and they're introducing a home security system later this year. And then there's the middle ground, companies that only do home security systems, um, and really they're just devices and packages of devices, companies like Simply Safe and Canary, and of course, uh, one of my favorites uh, that I got to see at CES a couple of years back, Aura, which is completely wireless and invisible, pretty cool tech. And you know, these systems, you know, you'll get charged by the big boys a monthly fee and they'll generally install it free of charge. And then the other systems you're gonna pay up front, you know, a couple hundred dollars for the hardware. And then they're gonna offer you perhaps a monthly monitoring service that's not on a contract, but it's a lower cost. So it really depends on your needs. And speaking of needs, so let me talk about the third option, the DIY option. And when I talk about it, let's talk about your needs. What do we really actually want out of a home security system? Peace of mind or perceived peace of mind, because I think all of us are looking to get one main thing out of a home security system, and that is to be alerted when something has gone wrong. You want to be alerted to stop the behavior, to catch the burglar, to notify the authorities, or have them automatically notified via a call center. You want that to happen. That's what we are all looking for. And if that is the only thing that you're looking for, is to be alerted, and you are a little bit more hands-on, then you can easily start with your own home security system of your own preference of devices and technologies and size, starting small and kind of going a la carte. And you can mix and match based on aesthetics and capabilities and all the different pieces that make up these systems, such as sensors and cameras and whatnot, and of course based on price. So now you're probably saying, okay, Joe, well, what's in your tiny little smart home? What's your home security system? And mine has kind of come together organically. It's just sort of happened over the past couple of years. Some of the products uh, were supplied for review by the various companies, but we'll start all the way in the back in the bedroom where there is the Fibaro motion sensor. This is a Z-Wave device that is connected wirelessly to my SmartThings hub, and that's how I get alerts that way. I also have the Zmodo Pivot Cloud Camera. It sits on my fridge here in the main space, and it has motion sensors, and it, if it detects anything, it'll spin around and take a whole video of the room. Then on the front door, I've got a home kit. I've got the Elgato Eve door and window sensor, and that, that one and the uh, Zmodo camera were both supplied for review purposes, just so we're completely clear on that. And all of the devices, as I've kind of talked about a little bit before, all of them are set up to where they only alert me about something going on if I'm not here. So I don't get like false alerts. I don't get alerted every time I open the front door uh, and close it, you know, myself here. And remember that the best thing about the DIY option, much like the rest of the smart home, is that you can start small and go at your own pace. This means starting with something as simple as a security camera, which they generally operate on Wi-Fi. They don't require a smart home hub of any kind, and you can grab the one that simply suits, you know, the best aesthetic 
aesthetics and looks and design and capabilities and of course price. And not to plug HomeKit, but if you're in the Apple world and you already have an Apple TV, you can start your home security system with just a single sensor for around $50 or $60. The Apple TV will get your um, the signals from the, the Bluetooth sensor out to your, um, your iPhone when you're not at home. So lots of options. I like the DIY route but it's up to you. Anyways, I will have some links to the products that I mentioned in the video description. I've reviewed the ones, or at least the two, not the third, uh, the, the Fibaro sensor I'll be reviewing soon. And the other products I mentioned, <clears throat> I'll be talking about them in a little bit in an accompanying article on smarterhomelife.com. And if you'd like me to review those in the future, as some of those do get pretty pricey, I would love to have you as one of our direct supporters of the show. You can learn more at patreon.com slash smarterhomelife. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.